Hello everyone, it's the Canadian Wi-Fi. I just want to start off today's video by pointing out that uh, my dad recently got a new TV, and as a result, the old TV is now part of my computer setup, and I just felt like sharing this with you because it looks amazing, in my opinion. I know it could probably be topped. I know a lot of you probably have better setups than this, but for me, for now, this is pretty incredible because uh, the largest I've ever had is a monitor, the thing you see on the left, which I now use for PS3, uh, NES, GameCube, the Wii, and N64. So, that is just how I'm going to start off today's video. Second thing you're going to notice, or you're going to notice, that I'm going to tell you, is that this is a playback, which I haven't done in like five months, because normally after a good game, I just record it right off of Showdown, so I get my background, so it's just easy, so I don't have to worry about it switching sides. Unfortunately, what happened here is, as you may or may not know, I went back to school two days ago, and there's an earwig crawling towards my chair. I'm just going to kill it with a metal rod I'm going to go grab. I'll be back in half a tick. How you deal with earwigs. Anyway, as for my schedule this semester, so far, as it stands right now, uh, they, they messed it up really badly, and I currently have spare, 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 and chemistry, and I'm not even taking chemistry. So basically, my first two days have just been hanging out in the library with a couple friends, work on my locker, which I can post a picture of what my locker was last. Are you kidding me? I was killing an earwig, I'm sorry, I just. There was an earwig crawling towards me, and I killed it. There won't be banging like that ever again. Interruption counter is now at 2. Okay. <laughs> Where was I? Um, I can post a picture of what my locker was like last year because it turned out quite nice in my opinion. Uh, the locker I'm going to go for this year, we'll see how far I get with it. I'll post pictures, post updates, a uh, link to a Facebook page that I'm actually keeping updated on it uh, down below. Anyway, wow off topic. Uh, this battle I had during second period, so around 11 a.m. today, I had it on showdown in the school library, and um, I obviously had no way of live recording it on showdown, so what I had to do is save the replay, email it to myself, and here I am at home at 10.43 p.m., uh, sitting in front of a 46-inch LCD TV uh, about to narrate a battle. So, first for everything right now. Okay, so looking at the opponent's team, I'm on the other side, of course. It's a 50-50 shot, and the one time that I have to do it like this, I end up getting flipped. My team is the one with the crowd on, which a couple of you asked to see more of, and uh, I oblige. Uh, just kind of wanted to use some rain spam. I was on the OU current ladder. Uh, my opponent is also using rain spam, but he's using a very annoying-looking rain spam. It has two uh, evolutions, but it it is just... Uh... Because I know Restoration Vaporeon is incredibly hard to break through. In fact, the only thing on my team that can really break through it, uh, most likely because it has Roar, is uh, if I leave Toxic Croak as my last Pokemon alive. Or if Crawdon comes in and gets two crunches off and doesn't get burned by a skull. So Vaporeon is quite annoying all right off the bat. Pharaoh, really the only th thing I have to... Well, I have a lot of things to deal with Pharaoh on this team. Toxic Croak loves switching in on it, but it has to... I have to predict the switch into Pharaoh and switch in my Toxic Croak on that turn. Otherwise, I get the... I risk the chance of being um, status or leech seated in general. Um, Gengar, kind of a threat, not really. I have a bronze on, and um, Lando T, if it's scarfed, is actually a giant threat to my team. But other than that, um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I am Hydro Pump Spam, like I said, I'm on the other side. Okay, so starting off today's game, he is going to lead off with a Gengar, and I'm going to lead off with a Bronze on. First turn, I just went for a Gyro Ball, because he's a Gengar, and that would have done a crap ton, and if he went for a sub, it would have broke the sub, etc. I didn't want to set up Stealth Rock because he set up a sub. Unfortunately, what it does is it doesn't allow me a free switch into my Toxic Croak because obviously if I had set up Stealth Rock first turn, I would have went into Toxic Croak on the second turn, predicting the Stealth Rock from Spheroth Horn. Anyway, um, I'm going to be the man of the two of us and set up the rain first so I don't. he doesn't have to switch it in later. You know, I'm very Canadian of me. I'm going to take the initiative set it up. You know. um, I switch in Toxic Croak, predicting at the worst, maybe a uh, leech seed, most likely a power whip, but he T-waved me. He actually, I was in a school library, so obviously I can't sit there and be like, he just T-waved my toxic rock. <laughs> but I felt that way inside. I T-waved Ferrothorn. I haven't seen that in forever, and it, I hate it so much. Uh, he happens to have a 100% counter to bulk up toxic toxic rock, which is Gengar. And he's going to go for a sub. And here I thought I was going to be really sneaky and uh, go for the surf, break a sub, and then he might not know I'm Scarf, so he'll stay in. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, hey, you idiot. 
the, you'll outspeed him on the first turn, showing that you're Scarf. Um, predicting Ferrothorn here, I go out into Petalburg City just to get off a nice superpower. It does have around 75% roughly, but it actually doubles under the very poor. What did I? What just? What just came out of my mouth? I've never stuttered like that before. Jeez, man. Um, I'm just gonna go for a nice crunch. Get the defense drop as well. He just roars me out. As uh, Toxic Crow comes in, I know that's gonna bait in Gengar, so I'm actually gonna double right out into um, my Bronzong. And now predicting Ferrothorn to come in and go back into this thing, and that was one too many predictions. So, <laughs> um, I'm stuck in here with Crawdon, and now predicting Ferrothorn, maybe? I'm gonna go out and, or not predicting Ferrothorn at all, he has a sub up, why would he switch? Um, predicting not wanting to get hit by a really powerful move, knowing that I want Crawdon to run for later, and that uh, Bronzong can take on a Gengar. I'm gonna go in to Bronzong. And I'm predicting the disable here, and I'm hoping the hidden power does enough, but it only does 24, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is a huge problem, because guess what he's going to do? He's going to be able to sub, stall, and get back a ton- or, he's going to put me in a really bad position, uh, with, he's going to have a sub up, and Gengar with a sub up is not fun. So, um, I'm going to use hidden power, as you can see, he's only been doing 24%, and as you can see, his shadow balls have done 33.1 and 33.1. So that's obviously the average damage of a Shadow Ball, 33.1. And on this turn, I'm only at 31.1, and it only does 29. <laughs> so I got incredibly lucky there. And um, and my Gyro Ball is disabled, so uh, he knows he can't sub up because I would just Gyro Ball it away. And he's forced to kill me off, and uh, I can bring in Keldeo. Predicting me to be Scarfed, he's going to make a really stupid play here <laughs> and go for, sur or go for sub as I Surf. And then he disables... Predicting me to be scarfed, I'd just kill him off with an icy wind because I'm intelligent and I know that the disable is coming. In comes Politoed, and uh, predicting it to be scarf and have psychic as the only reason he brought it in, I go into uh, Crawdon trying to catch him on the psychic because he brought it in so convincingly. But no, I thought, you know, a normal person would bring in a Jolteon to scare out a Keldeo, but no, he, he brought in his defensive Politoed for Toxic. Um, here's a huge turn. He mentions a Leech Seed as I sub up, and uh, that basically. Pretend I wasn't paralyzed on that turn, and that's what would have happened at the end of the turn. So, really, that's what you get for running T-Wave, in my opinion. I know it's kind of standard, but no, just stop. If he was running T-Wave and Gyro Ball, I would actually murder his family, but... Um, I know what he's going to do here is rest up so that he's at a lot higher health, because, as you can see, it only does, like, 30%, because Vaporeon's kind of ridiculous if you've, if you've never used one. And, on, and to boot, I even get paralyzed on the turn. He roared me out, so I don't even get off that damage. On this turn, Ferrothorn... Incredibly obvious. I'm not going to go for another crunch. I'm sorry. It would have done a ton to the Vaporeon. Really, the only thing it's not going to do a ton to is the Landorus. But at that point, I mean, you, you wouldn't switch a Landorus into a adaptability choice banded waterfall and rain. So, or you wouldn't switch it in because of the threat of that. Um, he switches it in now as uh, I died a Toxic. I don't see any leftovers this turn, which makes me think he is scarfed. And I bring in Keldeo. I'm like, Fine, I'll just bring in Kelio. I can live a hit. It doesn't get a good flying stab. Oh, okay, he's not Scarf. What item were you? That's, that's, okay. Whatever, I'll take it. Now he finally brings in Jolteon. And, um, I wasn't trying to be the guy who switches in Thunderous on a Jolteon. I was trying to be the guy who sacks his Thunderous because it's the most useless thing left on my team. And the fact that he went for Thunder and happened to be Choice is just icing on the cake. So, I get up in Agility so I can speed the Jolteon when it comes back in. And I'm going to be able to do a ton of damage. As you can see, it only does 50%. And I uh, get my lefties back, which means I'm going to be able to kill this thing on the next turn. Uh, whoop, max damage. Uh, that didn't. I won't say that made up for the Gengar max damage, because that max damage changed the game. And my, uh, the max damage I just got there is kind of whatever. Anyway, that Jolteon switches out, and it's at 13%. Remember that. It can live a Stealth Rock at 13%, right? Right. Um, I'm a Scarf Poly, and I'm going to die a Stealth Rock, so I'm just going to go for Surfs a couple times. That actually does a decent amount to his uh, Defensive Polytoad. As uh, this allows me to bring in Keldeo. Now, here's what he should have done. He should have let Politoed die. He brings in Jolteon. Kills off my Keldeo. As I bring in Toxicroak. Toxicroak can live a Specs Jolteon Thunder. It does about 80%. Which means, as long as I don't get paralyzed, I can kill it off with a Drain Punch. And win the game, because Vaporeon can't do anything against it. It would literally Scald, which would replenish my HP. Roar, which would fail. Rest, or Toxic, I assume, would be his moveset. And obviously none of that would work. I could just bulk up to 6 and Drain Punch and kill it. But what he does do is go into Vaporeon. And looking at his team at that exact moment, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And then on top of that, he roars, not rests. So he's at a really low amount of HP. And knowing that he's probably just going to roar again, or knowing that he has to roar again because he doesn't want my Toxic setting up, I really don't know why he played the end of the game like this. 
because now he messed up and it allows my Kellyo to come in and kill it off. And his Jolteon died to rocks, even though it was at 13%. I know Showdown does the weird thing with the rounding, where for the opponent, 12.1 to 13.4 is counts as 13, and that's what it shows here. Whatever, man. Showdown's being weird. <laughs> Showdown's number system is kind of bleh. But um, to me, I thought he was going to live. To him, I guess he knew he wasn't going to live. That's why he went to Vaporeon. But... That was a very interesting game, uh, just the dynamics of where I played it, and it actually turned out to be a really nice 42 turn standard rain match where if at the end his Jolteon had one or two more HP, I would have been in a ton of trouble because I assume, looking at the ladder ranking, he was up at about 1980. Um, I assume he knew that Jolteon would be the correct play to go into there. He just knew that he couldn't because he saw that it could die and I couldn't see that it would die. I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, brush it off and pretend I didn't say anything. Anyway, um, we have a Keldeo dance in there in the background. I'm going to shut up. This has been 15, we're approaching the 15 minute mark on this recording. Um, I hope the video is not any more than 10. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like rating if you did. And I will hopefully see you before the end of the week. Thanks for watching. Peace.